One of the new and uh, quite exciting things that we brought out at IPC23 is a touch application for raw panels. So essentially touch devices like iPads, phones, Densitron screens could be turned into a raw panel device. So it's quite interesting because if something is a raw panel device, it means Reactor, the software we use to orchestrate the connection between panels and control of devices for broadcast and AV, that connection is uh, done in Reactor based on panels using the raw panel protocol. And if a touch device could have the raw panel protocol built in, then it would be straightforward to use the engine of Reactor to orchestrate this. So in this video, we will actually try to um, control some devices. Let's see if we have some on the network, like we have a, um, my go-to device would typically be an ATEM switcher. So we have one here, we'll just pick this one and that's gonna connect straight away. So now we can map functionality onto this. We are currently on a device, a blue pill server, which is our uh, no buttons, only one display device. And it's essentially just like a server for this whole platform. And today that's all we need when we want to use a Dentitron screen. So we have this Dentitron DS163XP or something. I'm actually, we'll see that in a moment, but I forgot the exact version number, but it's a two rack unit screen, which is um, HD, pixels in the width and then it's probably like a quarter HD on the height here and it has buttons very much like a stream deck which will allow you a tactile press onto the touch screen but it also has a touch area right here and we'll use that as a touch screen for reactor so that's today's uh, project so in packages of the blue pill device we'll now go and see what is installed and the Basically, the change, apart from having the ATEM device core installed, which we just did, we also have the hardware manager, reactor system manager. This is all standard. And in addition, we have the X panel touch. So this one, you will install that. And then um, actually, normally you will see like a default. So if you reset to defaults, you see this, which is, oh, I already set up a touchscreen panel. It is available as a raw panel device on this server port. It's on this WebSocket port, meaning that if I go to a web browser, point it to this one and type in that IP address, I get this. This is my current touchscreen um, UI for from, ah, from the blue pill. Yeah, it can take it. No worries. If I go back here, you'll see that we have some layouts we can choose between. Right now, we only give you some predefined layouts. Let's just pick a different grid, okay? And then we'll save and restart. If we do that, you'll see in the web UI, if I reload, we did get, get a different grip, uh, grid. And um, like that, you could experiment through all these. We also have something which kind of is like a stream deck. So this one would be, how does a stream deck Excel look? And that would look like this on the touch screen uh, application here. But the thing that we want to go for is the DS 163 XB, which is this particular model from Densitron that we'll work on today. So let's just set this up. And I also want to change the port over to this one because I have already pre-configured the panel to point its web browser over to this touchscreen application. Let's just quickly check it. So basically now we just changed over. So the web server is on this address. We'll bring it up. And this is what we'll see in a moment on the Dentitron screen. So before we do that, I want to highlight something called, um, let me see, no, wait, over here, Raw Panel Explorer. Yes, let's reload this UI. Um, so Raw Panel Explorer is a little application you can download from our GitHub repository as a binary, and it will uh, scan the network for Raw Panel devices. Today, we have uh, a number of things on the company network here, but the one of interest to us is this one, which is basically what comes out of the X panel touch device, it creates this virtual raw panel device. And if I connect to it, you'll see that I get the topology rendered as an SVG here. And if I click on this one, and if I assign a color to it, for instance, and type in some text in the display, then actually what will happen if you look over here is that we got that into the web browser. So the raw panel explorer is a way to connect to raw panels. And that could be Skyhoy physical hardware panels, because this is what we do. We make hardware 
tactile control with encoder knobs, joysticks, four-way buttons, a lot of displays to show you exactly what the buttons, knobs and faders do. And that, that's our main business. Now we extended it with a virtual access to the same features. So you can combine these two. And Raw Panel Explorer lets you lets you explore how you can work with the raw panel protocol on these devices, okay? So that's what I just did here on the Touch UI. Let me just zoom out again. And I have a, another little application, which is sort of nice when you have a raw panel device, which is, let me just quickly go here and just restart this. So I've just picked this port number. Oh, no, nah, I'm not sure that was actually the one. Uh, yeah, it will be the one. Okay, so now it's connecting to this one. Mm, what was it I just did? Well, what I just did was a it's it's a script which is also freely available from our GitHub repository where we um, uh, basically connect to raw panel devices and then we just cycle colors, display content and so on. So it's a little bit like a raw panel explorer. It's a test application for raw panel devices. And it's very useful in this context because it allows us to see, okay, something is happening. It is picking up display content, color content for our touch UI. And if I click these with the mouse of um, right now, I cannot use my Mac as a touch screen, so this doesn't work. But if I use my mouse on, side, it, on top of them, it does the same as what we'll see in a moment. Okay, I think we are now ready to connect the panel. So I'll basically show you, I just powered up the panel right now. It's gonna take a little while for it to come up, but I set it up already by the use of this Wiki article that we have written, where we basically go through and tell you, we have these various products from Dentitron, and uh, if you, you can choose to run it as a screen, HDMI screen that connects just to a computer of any sort, or as this article goes through, if you have a two rack unit screen with Lubuntu on, then you can set it up to automatically power up a web, web browser as you'll see in a moment. And that's basically what this article takes you through. So it tells you that you just need to edit this file, enter in this line, and that's what you see right there happening. We basically put in the IP address of the blue pill, just basically this URL. We just put that in so that it starts Firefox in kiosk mode, and then you will have this on the physical panel. So now it's time to test it, right? So we already have, uh, just for reference, this is the same URL that is being also shown by Firefox on the Dentitron screen. So it's just two endpoints pulling from the same address on the Blue Pill server, making this virtual raw panel device available. So I can now touch these and you can see the immediate reaction of them. I can also press the rubber buttons down here. So you see the same effect comes from pressing those. I can just keep doing so. The the response you see is currently something that is generated by my test script, okay? So if I wanted to, uh, you can use the Raw Panel Explorer as well. Uh, very useful, by the way, because with this one, you can see that you get these triggers in, you can see frequency and which uh, hardware component it was and so on. You can also study various, the topology of the panel basically tells you what can you do with it and you can send over graphics as well. So actually, if I click this button, which has a graphical field of 204 times 115. If I click this one and I send off a graphic to it, you'll see that I get that in the screen right there just until my secondary script will end it up um, invalidating it or, or removing it again. But basically I can do that. I can also set colors if I want. So now I set it to ice color. I'll do, do that just once again. So, but I, now I have two competing scripts. Let me stop my little cyclic script here. I want to um, just end that and we can clear out the panel so that it's like empty right now because the next thing we want to do is to use Reactor to put content on it and control our ATEM switcher, right? We want to get to that point. So basically we'll just add a new panel inside of Reactor and what we do is uh, discover panels. It will actually turn up on the network as a... Um, uh, MDNS announced device, so I'll just select it right here. And now it is connected to, I can even test, do I have access to it? Yes, I can turn that on and off. So that's a little bit of a test here. And then I'll create a custom configuration because now we can use Reactor 2.0, this amazing configuration engine we have made 
to set up a um, control experience with the ASIM switch. We'll just call it test for now. And uh, we have um, an ASIM switcher connected to already. Um, let's add another device actually so we can see multiple things being controlled. Um, do we have something else? Uh, could be this Canon camera, all right? So we have a Canon PPC camera. Let's go over to configuration. Now, Reactor 2.0 is just like a Stream Deck. You configure with the page based paradigm. So I can make like page number two here and then create that one. So now I can basically put functionality on either the one or the other page. I also, because we designed this for broadcast, added, uh, we have also a shift level. So we can also go to a shift level and then back to a normal. So within each page, you have basically two levels that you can operate on. So let's just do the basics first. On the background here, I can now say, okay, I want this to be a row of buttons that will select program preview on my ATEM switcher. Let's do that. So we have this program preview action and we can select the ME row. We can use an input and use batch edit to quickly set input one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Done. And now if we zoom in, you can see that we have input one, two, three, four, and it's already in the displays, it has green and red. So let's just see what happens if I press these buttons and you can see I'm selecting my preview source. It is a little more clear on the panel, but we do have simulation in Reactor actually. Isn't that pretty cool? It means that you can build your panel, test your panel, even control your panel, because if you press these buttons, it will correspond to pressing the button on the physical panel. Really cool. Now, let's uh, take this one uh, back to configuration. Sorry, let's uh, pick this one and then we'll make it a cut button. So we'll just bring this up. That's a cut button right there. If I select the ME row, I'll have an auto button. Ooh, wait a second, let me just go back. Search auto here. Yes, all right. And ME one, so now I have cut an auto. Let's just check cut auto uh if i maybe i want to actually have these so we can ooh, wait let me just select this one cut and yeah do we see it yeah we do somehow i think i rather want to go to the simulator so that it's easier for you to see over here yes or easier for me to see actually that something is happening as it's supposed to let's cut and see auto transitions here. All right, so that works. Um, so one thing you might be thinking, how can I put stuff onto page number two? On page number two, we might actually do uh, auxiliary. So we could change this one and call it aux one. All right, so on this layer, <clears throat> I would now drag across a bunch of these buttons, just like I did before, then have auxiliary select on auxiliary channel one, input number one for all of them immediately. Then I place my mouse here and then I just quickly auto increment almost these. And now I have, as you can see, um, I have auxiliary select now. Maybe if I use my ASIM software control, we can quickly verify this. So go to outputs and you can see the first output here. If I use, oh, wait, wait, yeah, yeah, actually it will work because now you see as I'm going through these buttons, I am selecting my auxiliary source using the Densitron panel. So that's super cool, right? One, two, three, four, five, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Nice. All right. So, um, so far, so good. So inside of Reactor, you might want to go between these two pages, actually. And now comes the cool thing. Let's over here assign this one as a, we go back to the background layer here, and then we make this a um, navigation key. So we can shut this down and then open this one up, switch page, and the page we want to sh uh, switch to um, is currently set to be the background. Okay, background would not be the ideal uh, page I want to change to so uh, oh wait 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 it is because it is uh, basically um, it, It's rotating here. So let's try that as I press this one. It actually goes to the other page 
uh, to the auxiliary level and then I have to put in this switch page button once again. So now I basically have something that will let me go forth and back between the two pages. Otherwise I could do it in the back end, but that's of course not the point of having a panel. That is you want to bring that navigation down onto the panel itself. So we'll just do that as you can see. Okay guys, this was um, an introduction to the uh, touch application used on a Densitron um, model <laughs> with rubber buttons combined with touch screen. These panels uh, can be um, purchased uh, either directly from Dentitron or from their partners in various ways. It is a little bit unknown to me exactly what would be the best route. You can also contact Skyhoyer and we can facilitate this for you. Uh, but the main point I want to bring across today is that these are great, great, great devices for having a touchscreen experience combined with Skyhoy technology in any way you want, because you can combine as many such panels inside of Reactor as you want. You can take uh, traditional tactile Skyhoy panels, combine it with touchscreens of different sorts, and have a unified control experience across many different input devices.